My bad. <clears throat> my bad. My bad. My bad. My phone had cut off. But again, sometime between that time, between 712 and 714 AD, both Musa ibn Nusair and Tariq ibn Ziyad conquered two thirds of Spain. And again, Ardos or Ardo was the king, the last king of the Visigoth at that time period, following Aquila the second, who had ruled prior to him, but only for like three years. Again, 711 AD up until 714 AD. Now, as far as King Ardo, Ardo, even though he ruled up until based on a record, it's sometime between 720 and 721 AD starting from 713 or 714 AD. Even though he ruled up until that point, that very year, 714, the caliph Al-Walid had ordered both Musa and Tariq to leave and go to Damascus. That very same year, 714 AD. Now, two years after that point, because actually before Musa left, he put his son in charge of the men that I've mentioned about what 12,000 of, of them or at least like the soldiers there in Andalusia. Right. Uh, but two years after that point, that's when their army and based on what I read in 716, they mostly considered or consisted of Arabs at this very point. Because initially, when they first invaded, it was mostly Berbers and Arabs. But this second time around, it was mostly just Arabs. That's when they went further north to that province that I mentioned. Uh, 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 Narbon Nenses. And the city there that the Visigoths were at, which is uh, Narbonnes. N-A-R-B-O-N-N-E-S. That's when they crossed through the Pyrenees Mountains and raided there and defeated them there. After that, the Visigoths were completely dissipated. There was no follow up or seceding king after that point. And also, as far as like uh, when Musa left, uh, as far as his son, his son, his name was um, Ab Abdallah Al Aziz. He is mentioned as being killed in 716. That's all they said about it. I don't know, like, uh, during this raid, when they raided through, the, when they went through the Pyrenees, I don't know, like, if he got killed in the midst of them fighting there in uh, Nar Narbonnes or whatnot, but he is mentioned as being killed. And then that's it. Again, as far as, like, uh, Tariq and uh, Musa, both of them died at, Dama at Damascus. Tariq, you know, like I said, he died in 720 A.D., as far as uh, the previous uh, governor of Africa, Musa, he died in 717 A.D. So that's the history of Tariq Ibn Ziyad. Like I say, he is a historical, uh, relevant person from my point of view, even though he seems to get more of the credit for this invasion than Musa, just because he touched down physically. But again, like this guy, like I say, he is universally uh, very fucking uh, relevant because of this paradigm shift that he ushered in in Spain. At that point, 711 AD, for the next, actually over 700 years, damn near 500 years, all the way up until like 1492, you had the Muslims that, that was ruling in Spain. And like I say, it was like a cultural shift from that point. Now, when I first read about this, actually all the times I read about this, I found it interesting, but back in 2017, right? Again, I was in Memphis, Tennessee, and I was working on a blog about Ibn Battuta. I had got the chance to actually get a hold of his book, even though I had to translate it. And I got as far as like, um, let me see, it started off talking about him traveling from Morocco through the Sahara Desert. But as far as how, I, like, the, where I got in the book, you know, I did a blog based on what I read, which was um, starting from Asila all the way to a place called Abu Layn. Again, I stopped there for a reason because I was trying to figure out like a like a contradictory as far as certain rivers and shit that they mentioned, like the Niger and the Nile River. So anyway, as far as me reading uh, about him, 
That's when I learned about this word incidentally. And it's called mulatto. I had never heard it, heard of that word before. And it's completely different from the term mulatto. It's not just like meaning a person of black uh, ancestry mixing with a person of fucking white ancestry. This word specifically means a person of Berber ancestry mixing with a person of native Spanish ancestry. So I'm thinking about that shit. I'm like, wow. That's interesting. So I started thinking like thinking about like the Hispanic population in general. Although you got so many different variations, like when people talk about northern, northern, northern Spaniards, the shit, central Spaniards, those from southern um, Spain, especially Andalusia. And then I'm thinking about this historical phenomena or um, this dynamic that Tariq Ibn Ziya ushered in, in part that he was responsible for. And then I'm thinking about America. You're talking about like population displacement and shit like that. And I'm thinking about like, okay, the Spanish mixture with the native ab aboriginals here in the Americas, not just on the main la uh, landmass, but all through the Caribbean, uh, the Carib Mexico, uh, South America. Again, even the Caribbeans as well, because you had mixture there especially with Africans too. But the whole point is people generally like when they look at like the Hispanic population, right? You know, they, they pretty much consider the cliche, you know, you got the Spanish mixture in them as well. But I'm thinking like, you know, this, this term mulatto made me think a little deep. So I'm like, I, 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 when I you know, I'm looking at different phenotypes of people and shit like that. Like a lot of people that's mixed with even like people that just claim to be Spanish. Sometimes they got like, uh, well, to me, Based on what I've seen, a lot of times they'll have darker hair, etc. Their eyes are not always necessarily um, bluish or really light colors. You know, a lot of times it'd be like dark brown, etc. Shit like that. Even though they still have like a white appearance overall. So I'm like, when I read this term mulatto, I'm like, I bet you in a lot of their ancestry, uh, Hispanic ancestry, whether you look more like a person of color relatively speaking or you still look white ish but you don't look completely like a northern spaniard i'm like i bet you in their ancestry they got a there's some uh, middle easterner middle eastern dna in there so like years back right after you know me learning about this term and it doesn't come up that much muladu or mulatu i even tried to research the term today and i couldn't come couldn't find it i'm like what the fuck i remember this word but years ago right i was watching this episode randomly this show called the real and uh they had a, a segment where they took a dna test to fi figure out what their genetics were all of the all of the hosts but i remember adriana in particular so they so the lady reading to her like the different mixtures that she got in her and shit like that and i remember she she has 8% of Western Asian in her. And immediately I thought about this term, uh, uh, Muladu, because she is also of Hispanic ancestry as well, in part. Then there's another person. She's actually a battle rapper. She goes by the name where her Monica is RX, but she also goes by Pretty Reese. Her actual government name is Marisa Castillo, I believe. She's from compton california now her mother for example is black pure black and i think she used to be a black panther or at least affiliated with them as far as her mother her father is from mexico right and uh i think he is mestizo like full-blooded mexican or whatnot although you know uh I think she also say he's a Chicana or something like that. So I guess it's mean like, you know, American, but still, as far as like his genetics, he's from Mexico, right? If you go on her YouTube, I seen this video a while back too. If you go on her YouTube channel, the very first video she did was about her ancestry. So she's going through like the different percentages of ancestry she has in her. And I think West Africa, she has like 49% of West African ancestry in her. A lot of it is from Mali, right? Malia. And then other places too. But 
she mentioned how much Middle Eastern ancestry she has in her. Now, granted, when she started off, she said Western Asia. She said, I have uh, 7% of Western Asian uh, DNA in me. And again, immediately I thought about that term, Muladu. Now, especially thinking about somebody like her, like her father, who's more so pure blood, pure uh, bread, relatively speaking, for the most part. And then her mother, who's like almost the opposite of that. But yet in her uh, lineage, she still has at least 7% of Middle Eastern ancestry in her. But just to keep it fair, when she broke down the Western Asian ancestry in her, she did mention everything except Western Asia. Because, you know, Western Asia is basically the Western portion of the Middle East from like fucking um, Turkey all the way down to uh, uh, the Negev Desert, basically, which is basically north of uh, uh, Northwestern Arabia. Basically, that whole little section right there, that's Western Asia, but not just to be technical. But she did say when she broke it down and went further, she said Iraq, uh, Iran. She mentioned a couple of Central Asian places such as Azure, Beijing. Uh, I think she said Armenia. I don't think she mentioned Georgia. And she mentioned a couple of a couple of others. But <coughs> even though like uh, you got Berbers and Arabs and Africa, as far as like that Islamic history, especially during that 700 year period, you know, it was a lot of people traveling around. It was a lot of people of Islamic persuasion. It was a lot of people mixing. But the the main th theme of it is Berber and Spanish and Spanish ancestry. So I believe there's a story, even though even though like a lot of even though those places she mentioned is not necessarily just Western Asians, Western Asia. I believe there's a story behind that. So I'm like, damn, these two individuals, they still got Middle Eastern blood in, in them. And as far as Ariana from The Real, she specifically said Western Asia. So just looking, just again, just reading about this history and then looking around, I'm like, man, a lot of Hispanics in general don't know how much West, Western Asian blood that they may, may have in them because 700 years is a long time, even here in America. Like I said, population displacement. However, America has not existed for more than fucking 500 years, let alone 700 years. So again, this guy Tariq Ibn Ziyad, stuff like that makes him that much more significant in my opinion, in my personal perspective. That's why I say in a um, geopolitical sense from a historical narrative, because the, the, the paradigm shift <laughs> that went on in Spain after they invaded it. So that stuck in my mind. So that's another thing that, you know what I'm saying, that I find interesting about this guy. Again, I'm going to leave it there for now. This blog is called Tariq Ibn Ziya, a brief run through. So y'all have a good night and thanks for bearing with me. It's your boy JL.